Welcome to Parking Stories NYC. All right, everyone, we've had plagues this year. We've had locusts in the form of cicadas, and we've had crazy, crazy torrential rain and storms. But today, it's all Redemption Day, bass, because today, bass, it's all trouble, about that all bass, about baby. That bass, yeah, that we got bass, Peter no Barber trouble, as our special guest. And I got an awesome bass, story about somebody that I met in New York City a couple weeks ago that's gonna blow your mind. And last but not least, we got an awesome video of the week. Stay tuned and you're gonna hear it and you're gonna love it. Yeah, buddy. All right, so it's alternate side parking day. We had a massive storm Ida yesterday, flooded everyone's basement and my ceiling. What do we got going on up here? Let's see if I can even turn around. Probably somebody getting into an accident. All right, this is exactly why you don't want the corner parking space. City because someone's gonna smash your butt as they come flying at a high rate of speed. It looks like this Mercedes thought that he was Tom Cruise in Days of Thunder. I can't slow down! As if this guy didn't have enough problems. So noting that you don't want to get smashed out on Fort Washington, I'm going to move on to a side street because I'm not optimally parked. We just snagged an awesome sp uh, spot during the storm last night. So I'm going to get this vehicle moved before we, uh, before we meet up with Peter Barber today. That's good. It still works. Back it up, baby. It's a beautiful day in New York today. Nice and cool. I have no idea how I'm going to get this thing set up. It's totally going to fall over while I'm driving. All right. There's my friend on the corner who steals that spot with his bike and his Volvo, that sneaky bastard. Man, this is one of my favorite parts about Washington Heights. We've got a shopping cart and these chairs and clearly a Corona bottle chained to this part. All right, so I'm going to give you the quick story of the week or my New York City story of the week. Uh, usually I don't do this, but since this week we're all about that base, I'm going to give you my story. I was walking in Jersey last week getting groceries with my family and since the Trader Joe's probably doesn't want my 70 pound Labradoodle in, I was walking Haven and with my son out on the uh, in Fort Lee, New Jersey walking up and down the river and you know the guy comments on my dog and said hey how's it going so I strike, strike up this conversation he comments on my shirt that I was wearing that day which is a Victor Wooten shirt that says real bass player and he's like hey man are you a bass player I said yeah I'm a bass player the guy says well what kind of music do you play I said well it's been a while since I've, I've played he goes yeah 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 but what do you play when you played. And I said, well, I was in a punk rock group, played in orchestras, played in jazz groups. He goes, yeah, man, sounds like we got a similar similar up upbringing. And I said, oh, that's fantastic, man. So what do you play now? He goes, ah, I'm in a band out in California. I go, oh, cool, cool, what band? Because thinking maybe I would know some random band that was out there. He goes, I'm in Angels and Airwaves. And I'm like, oh, I know who Angels and Airwaves is. For those of you who don't know Angels and Airwaves, in about two, I think it was 2005, Tom DeLonge, who was the, the lead guitarist for Blink-182, started Angels and Airwaves. 2015, Blink-182 broke up or, or disbanded, so to speak, and Angels and Airwaves continues to be Tom DeLonge's uh, project. Well, I met Matt Rubano, the bass player from Angels and Airwaves. Super cool dude. It was awesome to connect with him. Super New York moment where you're walking down the street. You never know, it's New Jersey, I guess, but still New York. New York moment, you're walking down the street. You don't know who you're gonna meet. And so it was super cool to meet Matt. Uh, Matt, if you are watching this, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I hope to run into you when you are doing, when Angels and Airways runs their tour uh, this fall. So that was my quick story. We're gonna get other stories from, from Peter Barber when he joins us. And uh, yeah, he should be joining us. It's 11.30, so he should be joining us about right now. Okay, so I got Peter Barber on the phone. I'm gonna patch him in right now. What's up, Peter? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Good. 
Good to meet you Good. finally. Well, Peter, man, thanks for, for joining me. I think it's been a, somewhat of a long time coming. Could you introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel? Sure, yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Peter Barber. I am primarily a professional opera singer. I'm a second year resident artist at the Academy of Vocal Arts in Philadelphia, which is basically a four year kind of professional slingshot into an international opera career where we are paid to train with these world-class coaches and perform roles. Uh, but during the pandemic, everything was mostly virtual and I decided to go back to my undergraduate roots of acapella music. I was music director of Exit 245, which was a national award-winning acapella group at James Madison University. And so I was like, you know what? I've seen these people doing these one-man acapella covers. Let me just give this a shot. So my, my goal for I guess summer of 2020, a big opera program I was doing got canceled. And I was like, let me just try to get one cover, just one video up. And that turned out to be Creep, which if you see my channel, you've probably seen my cover of Creep. And from there, it just kind of grew. And I started collaborating with more and more people, other bass singers, just kind of covering whatever songs I felt like would work well on the bass voice. And then just recently, I've started doing kind of really in-depth analyses and reactions to other mostly acapella creators and so i'm just kind of taking my background of acapella and uh music production and opera and then funneling all that and just kind of breaking down what these other creators are doing in their arrangements and with vocal technique there's a lot of folks out there that are self-professed experts on mm. uh they say they're a vocal <laughs> coach or they're a some sort of ambiguous title that they have and they're doing a reaction video or they're telling people what they should or should not be doing with respect to singing or I don't know what they're seeing out there and and you you know you're a highly trained musician right and you have the background in in opera and voice and your bass which I think speaks to a lot of people and I can tell in a lot of your arrangements because my undergrad was in music as well so my, I can tell from your arrangements that you know you know what you're doing in terms of chord structuring. So there's some really fantastic harmonies that are going on, especially in like Sound of Silence. Creep is fantastic. So that's what kind of uh, you know really spoke to me as a musician. You know what you're doing. And then regarding awesome. the, the YouTube, the the armchair experts on YouTube, there are <laughs> there there are <laughs> there are, I mean, countless. Um, and that is something that uh, drives me a little crazy. Not, not so much that they get attention, but, but bad teaching of singing is the reason why there are any, why anyone struggles vocally when they're learning how to sing. Yeah. Anyone with a voice can learn good technique. And I mean, yeah, to be like a big opera star, you do have to have, you know, a naturally really powerful voice and then you, you'd go from there, but anyone can learn how to sing well, pretty much. But if you have a lot of bad instruction and bad teachers, all those people with potential to sing well can never get there because they're they're dishing right. out all this bad information. Like there's two major things that can go wrong. They could learn bad technique and then end up with really bad habits. And then even worse, they can get vocal nodes and destroy their voice almost yeah. forever unless they get a major surgery. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, th the bad habits are are probably even worse than something like vocal notes because bad habits, if they're really ingrained, I mean, they can take, they could be so deep ingrained, you can just never get out of them or they can yeah. take, or they can take years to unwind or you have to take, you have to take such a long time off to come back to it that your brain forgets that muscle memory. The yeah. thing about nodes, which basically happens just from a lot of incorrect use and not resting and not hydrating for way too long over a period of time. That's like a, a sustained injury as opposed to something like a hemorrhage which happens mm. all of a sudden that's where a blood vessel pops and basically for a hemorrhage you just you go on vocal rest for a while you let it heal it comes back nodes are a little more tricky because if they get bad enough to be like a cyst you do have to get them removed surgically um, and the recovery is you know a couple months or so but i will say um, there have been so many great advancements in voice science in the last, really like the last decade, two decades to where if you're smart about it, pretty much no matter what your voice goes through, you can get back to 100% strength. I know singers, okay. opera singers who have had nodes and cysts and hemorrhages and who have all come back full strength of their careers. 
I think the one thing you can't get around is if you build up too much scar tissue mm. on your vocal folds, which comes from just kind of abuse all the time. You can't yeah. really, because you can't really get rid of that here. Gosh, that must be tough um, joining ABA throughout the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, it was, um, you know, everyone was so ready. I mean, no one thought the pandemic would last this long. So going into the summer, it's like, all right, this is a huge bummer. Our summer programs got canceled, but like surely by the fall, everything yeah. will be back to normal. And then the fall, and it's like, okay, yeah. well, surely by the spring, everything will be back to normal. And then no, then it, it turns out being the next fall, and it's still not normal, but it's good enough now to where we can uh, get yeah. back into it. But yeah, 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 singing, singing opera, it's just not the genre you want to be training with virtually. No, you know, no, like, it creates a lot of challenges. A lot of challenges and and the operatic voice you need to be in the room with a coach because it's all about the voice in person you know we're singing in opera houses with no microphones with the orchestra you've got to be able to hear the voice and what the voice is doing in person and you can get some of that virtually but you can't tell how big the voice is you can't tell how the voice is going to carry you can't get the really tiny nuances that that are involved in developing really good operatic technique and so, and then beyond that, I mean, it's just not very inspiring to be singing <laughs> these operatic arias in your basement. I actually had to use a friend's basement for the first wow. like six or eight months because our internet was so bad out in the country. Bad. I had to go to my friend's basement because they had this, uh, they had this like fiber optic hookup. So I was singing in my friend's basement, training oh. opera for like six <laughs> or seven months or something. Yeah, I, I hear you. So I'm, you know, I'm in New York City we have smallish apartments. My wife is is singing and and teaching, so she'll be singing in the back of my work phone calls. And people at work generally love it. You know, yeah. they're like, "What is that?" And my eyes, they're like, "What are you listening to?" I'm like, oh, "This is my wife singing in the back." So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know yeah, what your, yeah. if your friend had similar experiences, but thankfully that that family they like classical music, and my my friend uh, George is a professional guitarist in Nashville, and we've done a lot of projects oh, together. If you've seen my opera singer covers, if yep. anyone's seen those, he's the guy playing like all the instruments. Okay. In those videos, right. so what is the microphone that you use for the <laughs> for the just, just for, for the bass singing and like notes and stuff? Yeah. No, just general um, singing that you do uh, recording for for YouTube. So I rec I record with a road condenser mic so it's a it's okay. a pretty pretty nice microphone uh you know it's not like a neumann whatever that costs ten thousand dollars but yeah. it's, a, it's a few hundred dollars so it's a nice microphone yeah. um to, and but to be honest i don't i haven't i haven't really tested out a bunch of different mics so i don't really yeah. know how my voice would respond on different ones i've pretty much used this one because budget reasons mm -hmm. and it gets the job done yeah uh, so so i use that for all my high quality recording stuff and then you know for my like for my like reactions and stuff yep. i just use this little yeti guy here i'm actually yeah so i'm i'm in this little studio apartment here it's small it's only like 320 square feet that's right I'm you just moved to, it just moved so i'm in philadelphia now um right. i'm i'm trying to build like some kind of soundproof space so in this closet back here i'm yeah. currently i'm currently paneling that you can actually see some of them there in that screen they're they're yep. expanding right now i'm huh. trying to i'm trying to create a little studio because like this room is way too resonant to like record like once you compress everything you'd hear all this kind of white noise and background yep. stuff going on oh absolutely. so I'm, tr I'm trying to create that little space well i'm almost done with it so we'll see uh we'll see how it turns out have your neighbors complained yet or is it um artist housing of some sort no, it's uh, it's standard housing. I don't do any loud singing in here. I do my okay. reactions in here. Um, normally, I'll be able to just go over to APA and practice. So that's okay. what I did. That's what I did my whole first week here. This week, because it's the week before training starts back up, they do like renovations and clean everything. So I've actually been going down way into the basement of this building and <laughs> singing down there. So I don't do I don't do any opera stuff here. That would definitely disturb. Yeah, mul multiple floors probably. <laughs> What's your favorite uh, vocal group that's out there? Man, my favorite group. Uh, the top ones for sure are probably the same for most people. You got Pentatonics. And we're Pentatonics. And yep. Home Free and Voice Play. So those are my those are my three favorite acapella groups. If I had to crown someone, I would give it to Pentatonics. Okay. Wow. I mean, I, I really like all of them. And you see in my reactions how much I respect these yeah. groups and how much how many great things they're doing. There, there is just something... 
I just think like Pentatonix has all the vocal talent in the world and yeah. that all the groups have great singers. But to me, Pentatonix is just one small step above. They're kind of like the OG, like they kind of, they like brought acapella to the mainstream, you yeah. know, on the sing off years ago. Like, yep. Like they, they put it on the map. Avi Kaplan's the reason like more and more bass singers started kind of coming out of the woodwork and, and getting recognized and it's just they've they've been there since the beginning and they've just done it so well the whole time so you, know, you gotta you gotta give them credit for that yeah and i mean at the same time to be to be fair while they put everybody on the map like all these other bands are out there they're hustling right i i know some i know mo a couple of the guys in six appeal that i sang in the concordia choir with and like you know they're out on the road not oh, not yeah. the last year but like man i not the life that i could live it's uh tough, so yeah, it's definitely they're, they're a tough all life. out there and i know home free has been out there for a long time and oh, some yeah. of the guys yeah. uh i think one of their tenors was in foreshadow before that so like they've been out for 20 years on the road making trying to make this thing work doing what they love 100 percent. that's another group i mean really yeah home, home free's been around a long time too and they've they've got a lot of much deserved respect yeah in the absolutely. acapella world and even outside the acapella world i mean they the from what i know they they go on tour with guys like Darius Rucker and like open up for like these huge country artists because they do mostly country covers. Yep. And they go to big yep. country music festivals. And I think that's super cool that they get to do that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's rare that an acapella group gets to like really be working outside that genre because it's such a niche genre. It is. Yeah. And they, they found a way to kind of transcend it a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I assume you've been to New York City at one point or another. Oh, plenty and, of times for and, audi uh, auditions and stuff. <laughs> uh, so you, I want to hear one thing about like the strangest place you've probably had to sing. Cause I know they get a little weird here or warm up or whatever. Oh yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> after that, uh, you're a, a good New York city story that you might have. Okay. Maybe they're the same. <laughs> yeah. So like pretty good about preparing for things ahead of time. And so when, when I've come to the city for auditions, I always rent a room in Opera America, the Opera yep. America building. So I pretty much have always had a place to warm up uh, when I get to that building. But there have definitely been times when, I don't know, an audition gets moved around or something like that, where I do have to do some kind of warming up, either walking there or, you know, on the on the subway there. Um, which is which is really not so bad. You find if if you're walking around the city, there's so much noise, you can get away with some like closed mouth singing. You know, if I were singing like full on arias, it might be different. So I, you know, I really haven't, to be honest, I haven't had a like a, I haven't had to sing like full arias on the street to like prepare for an audition or anything like that. <laughs> the thing that would keep me uh, that I think has kept me from having like a crazy New York story is that when I've been in New York, it's always been. It's oh, you know what? No, I do have one. I do have one. <laughs> but this this is back from when I was in high school. That's all right. And, it was it and, was uh, even wilder back then. I'm sorry. <laughs> My we went uh, me and some friends. We went with a, a journalism class to New York, and we went to this, uh, this journalism convention at Columbia. And my, my, my friend, Chris, he, he loves, loves, love. He loved talking to girls and like making up stories and all these things. And so he goes in and convinces everyone at this entire program on campus that I am a foreign exchange student from Australia. And we proceeded the, the whole weekend. We went, I think it was two or three days where everyone thought for real that I was an Australian student and it became like this weird legend around the Columbia campus where people would be like pointing at us and be like oh that's the guy and he's got his Australian friend there and blah 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 and at some point <laughs> we were in this restaurant and we were talking to this this new group of girls doing the whole doing the whole spiel and our class from journalism comes in the door and totally busts us ouch does not let us get away with it so they just they just come up to the group and they're like oh how you guys doing and we're like trying to somehow get out of it did not get out of it totally busted super embarrassing but it's pretty funny to reflect on now and all the other vocal groups out there you guys ever get together for like 
you know, pizza, scotch and cigars? Like what, does that ever happen? <laughs> I mean, the pandemic kind of happened, so I don't know if that happens, but is there any plan to get you all in a room just to, we, I don't know, sing low from, notes and eat pizza? So the group, um, so the group, uh, the group I'm in now is the bass gang. That's a yeah. group, group of four, me, Bobby, Tommy, and Marwan. Uh, all across the world right now it's just a virtual group you know and it'll, it'll probably stay that way because we're all we've all got different stuff going on um and then bobby's in another group called the wellerman which has gotten yep. really really well known for sea shanties they like they yep. have tiktok on the colbert show and stuff like that oh yeah and we are actually uh joining them for something i can't re i can't reveal any details sure but we are we're going to be joining them for something on their new album. So that's one awesome, that's one collaboration because of the pandemic and because a lot of these groups have formed virtually. People live all over the place. So for us to do like a pizza cigar night, it would be like we'd all have to like fly into a city or something. Yeah. So you know maybe that's possible when the groups get bigger. Like I'm like you know Voice Play or Home Free, they would have the budget to just go like like if home free wanted to fly to florida and hang out with boys play like they can yeah. do that we don't really have that opportunity yet <laughs> i will say back when i was in exit 245 in undergrad we did do a lot of hanging out with other acapella groups uh we hung out with this, this uh, female group called the blue stones seriously mm -hmm. one of the one of the best acapella groups i've ever heard like just sensational singers Wow. And so we would hang out with them and we would also do a yearly trip to Miami of Ohio to spend a weekend with this group called Open Fifth. Awesome. Well, I got a little bit of uh, a lightning round before we before we oh, adjourn boy. here. Yeah. Okay. So it's all about bass. OK, mm. uh, your favorite bass singer can either be um, acapella group or operatic bass singer. Samuel Ramey. All right. Oh, actually, look, he's the, he's the guy in the poster right there. Oh, nice. All that's, right, Sam, all right. that's Sam Ramey. Fame, uh, favorite bass player, if you have one. Um, Victor Wooten, probably. All right, I'll go Victor Wooten. That's the shirt I was wearing. It was Victor Wooten shirt. Hey. So I would have also accepted Flea. But oh, that uh, <laughs> was my other. That was my other answer. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> uh, this one. This one's a little tricky. I think there's right. only one answer. Okay. Uh, favorite ba bass fish singer. Maybe I'm dating myself on this. But like bass. Bass fish singer, big mouth Billy Bass. It was this fish from like the er the early two thousands. You press a button, it was all over the place. And there's a whole, oh, really? There's a whole restaurant that all they have is this guy in a staircase somewhere. It's pretty wild. I've definitely so, seen like the fish on the wall that that talks. Yeah, he somewhere. says, uh, "Take me to the river, put me in the water." <laughs> I think is this deal. No, unfortunately, right. I didn't catch that one. <laughs> Favorite military base, if you have one. Oh, my friend Joey is uh, is in the military singing. He's a baritone, but I'm sure he sings bass in the. And I think he sings bass in the military choir. Joey Mazzara. So now we're talking chemistry, acid or bass. Bass, baby. Yeah, right. All right, baseball. <laughs> first, second, or third base. Hmm. <laughs> uh, if I ever played in, well, I, I was catcher, but if I ever played infield, they'd stick, they'd stick me at, at third. Cause I had a, I had a good arm. We'll go third awesome. base. All right. So math base nine or base 10. Base 10. For <laughs> All sure. right. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, that, that was fun. Uh, I haven't done that before. <laughs> Um, you did you did awesome i think you got Great. them all <laughs> all except, except for, the, the bass fish. except for yeah that one is a stretch though because he's a bass but uh <laughs> i actually have a funny story about that mix yeah. up there so i i put a video on my tiktok and it got it ended up getting like one hundred and fifty thousand plays hey. but it was me it, it was me inhaling helium on a boat yeah and, the, and oh then saying God. a few things <laughs> and my caption was oh my when uh when a bass <laughs> takes <laughs> helium <laughs> And so many of the comments were like, I thought you were talking about a bass fish. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Because <laughs> you can't tell if it's just being spelled. It's spelled of course. The same and they way. See, yeah, they see water and they're like, this dude's going to get helium <laughs> to a bass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, sorry yeah. to disappoint, but it's still a pretty funny video. <laughs> That's awesome. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, this has been fantastic. Thank yeah. you so much for the, the time today and, and gracing us with your base presence. Of course. Happy to do it. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. All right. Me. That was Peter Barber. Subscribe to his channel. Like his videos. He's an awesome dude. Huge voice, as you've heard before. 
Uh, thank you so much to Peter for joining us today. Really appreciate collaborating with other content creators. All right, so the Yeah Buddy YouTube video of the week this week comes to you from somebody who's creating content that is near and dear to my heart, and that is Francis Ellis. Francis Ellis does mostly, he's a comedian. He's a New York City comedian. He travels all over the world, or travels at least all over the city. Let me pull in my mirror here. Travels all over the city. And uh, so Francis does alternate side parking Thursdays on Instagram. And that dude is freaking funny, man. And of course, I mean, that's his job. They got me. They got me. Oh my God. You know, this is always the risk. I'm up there asking people about alternate side park at Thursdays. There's no leniency. Oh, right in the feels. What's the damage? 65 bucks? I think so. You know it. You said the price already. Yeah, of course I know it. I wrote the rule book on alternate side park at Thursdays. It's not funny. Just one of those things you hate to see. This is the occupational hazard of alternate side parking Thursdays. But you know what? We're not gonna let it get us down. It's Thursday before the 4th of July. <sighs> All right, so that was Francis Ellis. Take a look at his YouTube channel, subscribe to him. Also, check him out on Instagram and his other social media networks. I know that he's got a Patreon account, so if you are, if you're into that thing, he's got one of those. With that being said, Francis, you're up next, buddy. I want you in the seat next to me doing parking stories in New York City, but I'm calling you out. Love to have you on the show. All right, everybody, so that was Parking Stories NYC. We had some awesome interview with Peter Barber. Thank you, Peter Barber. You had the video of the week from Francis Ellis. Francis, again, want to be on my show. I would love to have you. Take a moment. Don't worry about liking or subscribing to my channel, but do like their videos. Subscribe to their channels and their various social media networks. And I hope to see you next week on Parking Stories NYC. Yeah, buddy. Here he is. He snuck that Volvo back in and turned the bike. Sneaky guy.